Clash of Clans is nearly 5 years old, and since then, many mysteries have already been uncovered. Like the story of how the Barbarian and Archer became the Barbarian King and the Archer Queen. How the Builder ended up in Clash Royale, and what happened to the Wizard and Hog Rider after they set sail for a new island. But there is another mystery still yet to be uncovered. That is, until now. Today we will take a look at the origin of the Builders, as well as how the P.E.K.K.A. was created. Over five years ago, back at the beginning of Clash, there were two new troops just introduced to the village. These two troops both happened to be dwarves, and they were brothers. The younger brother's name was Bill, and his older brother's name was Dirk. These two were extremely competitive with each other, always competing to see who was the better brother. They would compete to see who could run faster, who could build better things, and even who had a bigger hammer. They would compete for literally everything. Anyways, during their first day in the village, the village chief was asking to see what they could do in battle. So they were both sent into battle, where there were barbarians, balloons, dragons, goblins, and archers all fighting around them. Bill and Dirk felt way out of place, and quickly realized that they had no fighting abilities and were basically just standing bait. They had talents in other places though, like building things, and since building something wasn't going to save their lives in the middle of this battle, they quickly jumped out of the way and hid in a bush until the battle was over. When the battle had finished, all the troops around them had turned into a purple liquid known as Elixir, whereas the two brothers did not. They returned to their village and approached the chief. When the chief saw them, his jaw hung open. He had never witnessed troops come back from a battle before. This was a first. But he wasn't so much impressed as he was furious. He scalded them for being cowards and not fighting with the rest of the army. He even blamed them for being the reason that they didn't get the 3 star. The builders felt awful, and the chief was furious. So the brothers offered to make it up to the chief for supposedly losing the battle for their village. So they offered to build him something that could help. The chief allowed this, but told them that they had until sunset. Otherwise, they will both be exiled off the island. So both brothers got to work, attempting to create their best creation yet. And by the time sunset came, they both met the chief outside of his town hall. And then the chief asked Bill to present his creation first. So Bill brought forward a shiny blue piece of armor. And when Bill explained what it was, he said, Since I cannot fight in battles for you, I created something that can. I present to you the Builder's Personal Electronic Killing Knight Assistant. Or for short, the Bibka. Then the Builder flicked a switch on its back and the Bibka came to life. He showed what the Bibka could do. It was the strongest troop the Chief had ever seen. He could swing hard enough to send barbarians flying. And its armor was built out of the strongest materials that could be found on the island. And the King was extremely impressed. And after he got over the amazing new creation by Bill, he asked Dirk to bring forth his creation. So Dirk unveiled his brand new defense. He called it the Crusher. Sadly, the chief did not look too impressed, and he said, So you're telling me that your younger brother created an artificially intelligent mechanical robot with super strength, and you made me a giant rock that goes up and down. After realizing how stupid that sounded, Dirk looked down and agreed. The chief was so disappointed in Dirk that he exiled him into an abandoned island a long ways away. And Dirk spent almost 5 years taking a power nap, trying to sleep off how mad he was that he got kicked off the island while his younger brother got to stay. He swore that one day he would get his revenge. But until then, he went back to sleep. And back to the home village. Even though the chief was furious at Dirk, he was still awestruck at Bill's new bubka, but he said there was one tiny problem. The name. He said he had to change it because it sounded really stupid. So Bill suggested, how about just Pekka? The chief approved and was so amazed at Bill's building talents that he named him the Village Builder. Bill continued to build new structures for the chief and continued to upgrade his greatest creation, the P.E.K.K.A., making it more and more powerful as time went on. Life was pretty good. Bill got to build things all day, every day, which he loved doing. But as time went on, Bill started getting tired of doing the same thing day in and day out. But the chief continued to force him to work. So the builder had to do something about it. Last episode, we found out about the origin of the Builders and how the original P.E.K.K.A. was created. But there are still two more versions of the P.E.K.K.A. that are still unanswered for. So this is going to be the story of how the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Super P.E.K.K.A. were brought into this world of Clash. Welcome back. 
So even though the builder didn't like his job in the village, he decided to put up with it for the time being. But the thing that really got him through this was the fact that he learned how to clone himself and create four other builders. But we'll explain that in another story. As the years went on, he continued to do the same old job day in and day out. However, about five years later, he finally reached his boiling point. But first, let's head over to where the other builder, Dirk, was exiled. After almost four and a half years, Dirk finally woke up from his extremely long slumber and realized that he was on some mysterious island. Even though he was sleeping for almost five years, he still clearly remembered how his brother showed him up and created some super cool new mechanical robot called a P.E.K.K.A. Even though Dirk was super impressed with his creation, he also felt super betrayed that he got exiled, whereas Bill, his brother, got to stay back in the main village. So Dirk promised himself that one day he will return to the village with the biggest and best creation the village has ever seen in their lives. But the only problem was that he still had to create this new super creation. He still didn't even know what he wanted to make. So first, he decided to make his house. He got to work and finished his first building, the Builder Hall. And once he was done creating that, he decided to create a laboratory as well that he would use to create his new creation. However, after a few days and even weeks, his mind was still blank and he had no good ideas. But then one day he had a flashback to when he got exiled. He remembered seeing his brother's creation and how magnificent it looked. However, he felt that there was something missing to it. So then it hit him. I'll just create a bigger and better version of the P.E.K.K.A. So he quickly got to work gathering all the resources he could find and he worked hours on end. He worked many days without even sleeping, so determined to finish his project. And then about 14 days later, he added the finishing touches to his creation. And then he went outside to await and see what the final product looked like. Then out of the smoke emerged Dirk's version of the P.E.K.K.A. When it got out of the building, the building collapsed behind him. This new creation was a powerhouse. Five seconds after being born, he already destroyed a full building. Dirk could not have been happier. But then once the smoke settled down, a tiny blue metal robot came running out. This was no Mega P.E.K.K.A. This was just a tiny little mini P.E.K.K.A. Dirk's smile faded. He was no longer proud of himself. All he felt was a shameful feeling in his stomach. He was so ashamed of his mini P.E.K.K.A. And then weird enough, another mini P.E.K.K.A. came running out of the rubble. There were two mini P.E.K.K.A.s standing in front of Dirk. And then Dirk realized what must have happened. He had added enough materials to create a full-size P.E.K.K.A. But the laboratory's machinery must have had insignificant energy to combine them all. So instead of making one full-size P.E.K.K.A., it split them up into two mini P.E.K.K.A.s. Dirk was unsure of what to do, since he had no other way of getting more energy sources. And besides, the mini P.E.K.K.A. destroyed all of his equipment and his house. So he had nothing left, and all the trees in the forest were going to take years to grow back. So he decided to take his boat to a nearby village and hope for the best. When he got to a nearby island, the first thing that popped out at him was a giant arena where he could hear a roaring crowd inside. There was some sort of battle going on between two separate sides, the blue team and the red team. Dirk sat and watched the first match, and after the match was over, he confronted the king and asked him if he could spare any resources to build a new house and possibly supply any extra energy. The king replied asking what happened to his old home, and Dirk told him what had happened, how the mini packet destroyed his house and now they were homeless and how he has no materials left to build a new house. The king, who was actually impressed by this, offered Dirk a deal. He said, I'll tell you what, I will give you all of your necessary resources that you need for your house, and then I'll even triple that, and give you even more for any future projects you might have in mind. However, I do not have anything that can help you with your shortage of energy, and all I want in return is one of your mini packets. If that thing can destroy buildings as easily as you say, then I think it can help us win way more battles. Dirk thought about it for a second, and then realized that he has too many P.E.K.K.A.s, so why not just give up one? Besides, one destroyed his house, so he didn't really want to be around him anyways. So Dirk and the king made their trade. And then Dirk went back to his island, and the king became an unstoppable force with a new P.E.K.K.A. With a new mini P.E.K.K.A. Once Dirk got back to his island, he quickly rebuilt his house and started working on some new plans for his P.E.K.K.A. 2.0. Once again, he worked for weeks on end, but he still could not think of any solution to prevent the machine from making two mini P.E.K.K.A.s instead of one super P.E.K.K.A. He was about to lose hope, but then one day, a broken ship washed ashore. Unfortunately, a wizard and hog rider had both turned to Elixir, and what was left was the hog rider's hammer and the wizard's cloak. Dirk picked up the hammer and the cloak, and inside of the cloak was a bottle of blue liquid in it. 
The liquid was buzzing with electricity, and Dirk thought that this must have been a lightning spell. So he took it back to his lab, brought the mini packet in with him, and this time added the whole bottle of lightning to the mix. He turned the machine on and stepped out again. The machine started to shake and smoke again, before finally coming to a stop. This time the building exploded from the inside as a gigantic P.E.K.K.A stepped out. This P.E.K.K.A fused with the lightning spell and was just radiating energy. And when he stepped outside, Dirk's mouth hung open and he quietly whispered to himself, It's a super P.E.K.K.A.